I show 7 p.m. Good evening, everybody. We are recording directly to Panda TV 23, not in live stream, but um, they're recording the meeting. That's underway. You'll see in the top left of your screens, recording's underway. Welcome to the uh, January 11, 2021 Village Board, Village of Red Hook monthly board meeting. I thought I'd state two things up front um, to make sure we have a quorum. I'll just do a roll call if the clerk could be certain that we have everybody that I see on my participant screen, but I think for the record, we should just confirm that a second way. So Ed Blondell is here, Mr. Kowalczyk. Here. Mr. Lang. Charlie Lang, are you there? I am here, yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Noonan. I am here. And Jennifer Norris. I'm here. Good. That rounds out the board and indicates we have a quorum. Uh, what I'd like to do is, since we're all still in Zoom Ring Central format, as enabled by Executive Order 2021 and continuing, uh, we'll continue this way. I think for the foreseeable future. And then Lua of rising to pledge the flag and a normal community based central room format will just um, take a moment to pause in honor and memory of those who have passed away to COVID so far this year and in, um, to show some respect for our first responders and firefighters. We'll take a moment of silence, please. Okay, thank you. As is the custom in our monthly meeting, we'll open up um, with a review of the minutes from the December meeting. In that case, we only had one meeting in December, December 14. We decided to forego things closer to the various holiday season events. So the minutes have been circulated to the board in digital format. I would wonder if there are any other additions, alterations, or corrections. Hearing none, I would move that we adopt those minutes. Is there a second? Second. Any thoughts, discussion? All in favor, I'll just take a hand vote on this one. If I, we good? Aye. Four, five. Jen, I don't see your picture, but you there, Jen? Good. Okay, minutes are adopted, thank you. Um, our treasurer, Ray Toll, is out there. Ray, if you'd be so kind as to move us into the financial world and <coughs> give us your report. Uh, certainly. Uh in terms of the um, treasurer's report, the account balances as of the end of December uh, for the general fund, $648,173.58. The water fund, $108,702.86. Uh, trust and agency, $21,032.21. Petty cash, the same as always, $57.75. Village Green, $4,717.92. And this reflects the $568 increase uh, from last month uh, as a result of the generosity of Dave's Tree Service. Uh, Hard Scrabble, $2,346.85. Health Insurance, $7,279.12. Uh, the sewer fund, $60,203.32. This reflects an increase in terms of a wire transfer uh, from the Environmental Facilities Corporation from New York State of $39,111.79. I'd like to point out that because of legal and engineering costs, since then the number is back down to its uh, current level of around $21,000, but as of the end of uh, December, it was uh, just over $60,000. And the capital fund, there is uh, nothing in the capital fund at the present time. In terms of the reserve checking balances, the fire department, $5,029.72. Police, $14,574.69. USDA, $119,772.24. Highway, $20,771.89. Snow Reserve, $3,278.73. Tower Reserve, $17,707.28. Unemployment, $4,543.07. 
Court reserve, $3,297.82. Office reserve, $972.30. In terms of the monthly expenses for the month of December in the general fund, uh, the expenses uh, totaled $214,956.48. The water fund, $14,859.96. Trust and agency, $2,788. And sewer, I'm revising that number. We had nothing uh, showing, but uh, I checked back and uh, on the 29th of uh, December, uh, there was an expense of $2,198.72 uh, to the all New York title agency which reflected the ownership of the uh, sewage plant, uh, as submitted by myself today, Ray Toll, Treasurer. Thank you, Ray. And um, from my perspective, just to remind all of us, even though December 31 is the end of most fiscal, year, fiscal years, it's not for the village, we end May 31. Um, so, the detailed report that Ray attaches, profit and loss, budget versus actuals, is actually um, it should be it's seven out of 12 months in our fiscal year now past. So I think that's about 61.3% of a year or something like that. So I had gone through that pretty much line by line and just, I'd ask all of you and your departments to do that too, just to triple check how each area is performing, both on the revenue side and the Lost expense side. Um, one or two minor things I noticed. I guess the treasurer was mentioned, but major. the big thing is we're still facing with COVID certain increased expenses and certain reduced revenues. So far, our big guidance from the county though is sales tax are only off between three and five percent right now. So um, that was one unknown we didn't know as we set this budget, but that's holding. But certain other revenue streams are not, so um, we'll just have to keep that in mind. Um, anybody else have any thoughts or questions? I think I asked you off the record, but just for the record, the um, we're seeing a lot of sales of properties in the village right now that are well above assessed value. When will we start seeing the these? That's revenue from those. Question. They tend to have a longer tail, we'll call it. Um, properties sold, say, this between June and December. We will see that for another year. It's been my experience about 18 months before it gets through the process to the assessor's offices, down to county records, and back to us. Nothing that's delayed for any one reason. It's just the nature of the transaction trail and um, we will see it pretty soon we will know for those of us doing the budget um we will get the current assessed value tax base i've seen it going up ever so slightly the past few years after the great recession of 2008-12 we did see our assessed base drop but we've seen it climb back up i think um, we're somewhere near that 200 billion dollar mark and We'll be seeing, and like you're suggesting, I bump up a little bit, but I don't, I don't foresee a lot in this current fiscal year. But it's a good trend to have versus the opposite. Thanks for the question. Um, that being said, let's. Um, Does anybody else hear music? Like every time you talk, Ed, there's music playing, and we can hardly make out. Like it's just constant. Yeah, can you turn down the music, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's every every time, Ed, your thing comes up. There's some kind of background. Yeah, I hear it, not in my room where I am, but I hear what, like a... Or so, it's coming from somewhere. I don't, know. I don't know if like a participant is listening to the TV in the background or something. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on. Is there a way to like mute people I can, um... other than who's talking? I can mute all, but that can be difficult. It seems like I don't hear it right now. I think no. Now you're clear. Clear. Thanks for bringing that up because we don't need that. Yeah. Um, Thank you. That's that much was, better. That's better. Yeah, there was some background noise from somebody. Yeah. Thank you. But 
I hope you could hear what I was saying before. Um, you talked about the Treasury report. I would move that we accept the Treasury report for January 11, 2021. Is there a second? Second. No discussion. I think on that we could take a hand vote too. All favor? Aye. Aye. Um, you got that, Lara? Yes. Uh, let's see. Looks like next jumps to me anyway. Um, for the police report, we have the monthly report for December 2020. The number of incidents handled were 375. Breakout is 252 in the village of Red Hook, 118 in the town of Red Hook, four in the village of Tivoli. Um, resulting from that, there were uh, 79 tickets. They were 47 in the village of Red Hook, including one parking ticket, and 31 in the town of Red Hook. Arrests totaled eight. We talked about this in our workshop. We have this report in front of us. Uh, broke out was six in the village and two in the town. And that was as of the end of December 2020. Attached to the board's reports are details outlining the type of calls and locations and so forth. And that would be the police report for the month. In other areas, yeah, I can forego them to the rest of the regular meeting. Um, Will, do you have, as our newest trustee in your, in your second meeting, do you have handy the uh, planning department reports, the two pages of documents there? Will Noonan? Yes, I have it. Okay. Maybe you were the muted. Monthly Monthly report, trustee report for zoning and planning for December 2020. Building permits issued seven. Certificates of occupancy, one. Certificates of compliance, four. Municipal searches, two. Orders to remedy, stop work orders and court appearances, zero. Fire inspections, two. Complaints, four. Uh, planning board actions, December 10th meeting, um, signage application for four Morgan's Way listed under tax participle ID 62723125 was denied. Uh, number two there was signage application for 7405 South Broadway listed under tax participle parcel um, ID number 6272. One zero dash three two eight five nine three was tabled uh, to January fourteenth, two thousand twenty one, and the zoning board of appeals had no meetings this month because or in December because of no agenda. Okay, thank you. And then the secondary page there will uh, monthly trust you report with. You don't need to read all of the lines, but the, the the net revenue from that department for the month. Do you feel that? Oh, where is that? I have it in front of me if you don't have it right there. I don't have it right here. So, yeah, it's a too, much paper, too much paper. <laughs> it's a secondary page. Looks like this for your clues, but I'll, I can take it over for you. Um, okay. It's the revenue for the planning department. And um, it was a December month with not too much activity in the end of the month there, but the revenue is eight hundred fifty dollars. Thank you, Will. Um, your other areas there will tie in with our discussions later on. We could move to. How about Ms. Norris on materials management and related topics? Sure. All right, materials management, um, that actually should say for the month of December, not for the month of January. Sorry about that. 
For the month of December, we sold $2,040 in garbage tags and paid out $718.93. Uh, we had 6.68 .6 tons of garbage and 2.62 tons of recycling, which breaks down as follows, 0.41 tons of cardboard, 1.08 tons of newspaper, and 1.13 tons of commingled. Um, and as far as events go, we're kind of in limbo right now because we have no idea um, <laughs> what the next couple of months are going to look like. So this is normally when we start our first hard scrabble meeting and start thinking about dates for the egg scramble, other things, but we have no clue. Um, hard scrabble in particular takes a lot of planning and a lot of funding and a lot of, you know, just uh, preparation in general. So I don't know even if we did it, if it would probably have to be somewhat abbreviated or, or modified. I don't know that we could put on, you know, what we used to do in the before times. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully, you know, with the vaccine coming out and that sort of thing, um, hopefully in the next couple weeks or months, things might be a little clearer and we can figure out what we're doing this year as, as far as these events. So right. it's uh, kind of <laughs> hard to plan when we don't know what's going on. Yeah. So. Good, thank you. Yeah, it's, I agree. It's, we'd love to do a big show, but uh, so would everybody else, and none of us can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I was um, talking to um, one of the firms here in Red Hook that helped us greatly in the earlier hard scrabbles and still helps us with some smaller stuff on um, Firehouse Productions. And I thought it was an interesting story about entrepreneurship. They, they've picked up doing what I'll call a fake crowd sound. That, NBA games, <laughs> actually send crew and trucks, and they picked up the NHL, and uh, it's pretty amazing. They had to lay people off because they're not as big as they were, but they're still they found a way to do something. So if you watch any of those sports, you hear Red Hook guys making the sound match the movement of the puck or the basketball. It's kind of cool. Thank you, Jen. Yep. Uh, I know we talked about it last month too. The library has a program. I don't know if anybody can fill us in more later, but um, they're looking to accept, uh, I, I don't want to use the word e waste, but used computers, used printers that are still somewhat functional. They'll recondition and take off the operating system and put a Linux on and give it off to people that need to compete with schoolwork but don't have the income in the household to buy a lot of brand new equipment so i'll put a little burden on the library i think that program still exists where yeah least. i know that it was over the weekend i didn't know if it was an ongoing program or mel corker's <laughs> raising her hand hi that was the um partnership with Red and um can you hear me yeah go ahead. No, i can yeah okay that was a partnership with um ready and with bard um sustainability and we are not accepting any printers just it's just computers laptops and we got over five devices. We have more on the way. So that's um, it's exciting program. So it's still be, if people hear this, if they have a laptop, it's still good, still still active. Yeah. It's on, yeah, it'll be ongoing for in perpetuity um, or whatever. But um, just so you're clear, Ed, I did in fact accept um, your wife's printer. But that was an <laughs> exception. <laughs> that's a very good printer. A lot of, good, a lot of Big documents came off that printer. Oh, that sounds like special treatment to me. I know, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, um, but then on the flip side, we did get a call today, believe it or not, somebody looking for our e-waste day. I think we've been yeah. publish, publishing that. It's unfortunately cannot happen between the huge content and support that Bard helps with on that thing. And then um, secondarily, we've moved away from the cold winter month <laughs> collection point. So. We would like to do something. So uh, like we said, the library is definitely not e-waste, but if you have a valid, viable laptop that can see a new life, that'd be the, the place to take it. Okay, well, thank you, Jen. Yep. Why don't we go to Trustee Lang and water facilities. Uh, maybe we'll touch on um, LED lights, energy sustainability. Oh, uh, that's always a... An exciting topic, yes. Why don't you go, so Charles? Let's start off with the Village of Red Hook Water Treatment Facilities monthly. Actually, my first note is that uh, the village printer seems to be running low on, on blue, blue ink. Well, so I thought it was something you authorized for a, 
a new look or something there. Everything's know. everything's pink. It's not. Pink. No, I was. I am low on ink, so it did come out pink. <laughs> that's, that's a good sustainability issue that we worked the printers right to the very end. To the cartridge. Excellent, <laughs> as we should. So, so all Laura needs to do is shake. I did. I shook it a little. <laughs> I just thought so, she was being fancy. <laughs> So during the month of December, the water treatment facility treated 9,990,700 total gallons, which is an average of 322,300 gallons per day. Uh, and here's the, the flow chart. Uh, you can see that very well, but we're, we are in this new normal, this you know post-COVID use increase where we're running around 300,000 gallons a day or just over that whereas mm -hmm. before the 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 normal was around 250,000 gallons so um that's just where we are uh these are different times lots more people using a lot more water i think that accounts for an awful lot of this yeah. Um, we sent three bacteriological samples out to be uh, analyzed and they all came back clean. So no coliform, no E. coli bacteria were found. Um, and during the month of December, the water treatment plant used 100 gallons of sodium hypochlorite. So that's an average daily use of uh, 3.22 gallons per day. And I have the the daily uh, flow report here, and it's it's actually remarkably consistent. I mean, the daily numbers are right around that that 300,000 300, gallons a day mark. Good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, because we were seeing variation there. Some days it'd be high 400s. I think we even saw one in the five low fives. Could be that they've standardized their read point. Um, right, time, time whatever they've done or whatever's happened, that's it seems to have sort of yeah. so out. some of what we're looking for. Good, and um, what I was thinking when I mentioned energy sustainability, I've had periodic talks with NIPA, New York Power Authority, and this is on the old LED streetlight project. Um, you'll recall spreadsheets and things we developed several years ago. Um, they're moving to do installation, but we've never been totally satisfied what the repair f portion of the bid was. And I asked them to give me that again, and I still haven't seen it. As you might know, Central Hudson's done pretty much a full conversion of all their fixtures now to LED. So we're good on the consumption of energy side of the equation, but part of the NIPA project, we, we would actually own the armature and the light head. And that's where the, the lease agreement with Central Hudson costs us money. You right. all recall too that NIPA offered to fund what's called the stranded costs. You remember how there was a cost per fixture at Central Hudson? And we have not perfected on purpose. We have not gone to the Public Service Commission and started to work with paper. I, I still think I'm hung up. I know I'm hung up on the repair portion. Um, it's a, you all might recall the board that we cannot send our guys up. We don't have bucket trucks and you need certain high level electrician rankings to even work around primary high, 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 uh, high voltage lines. Um, so we've been taking a lower profile and moving on other sustainability projects like last year, right about this time of year, I think we announced and we're at the grand opening of the solar field. Um, so we're not ignoring the issue. It's just um, if NIPA sends me more on the repair factor, I think in our case, the streetlight presence is a little more important in the village, especially anywhere in COVID. I see so many people, to their credit, walking on the streets, and many of our side streets don't have sidewalks. Um, so the streetlights are more important as compared to the town. I think the town has them more out on their intersections and some of their more densely populated areas. But ours, I'm just very, still very leery of the change out. And, Although we did predict we'd see savings, it would be a little a little bit longer out in that we'd have to pay that stranded cost with borrowed money from NIPA. Um, so it's not like we're 
we said no to the project, and that's what I told them, but we need more information. But I just wanted to update everybody, and if, if anybody wants to jump on Lipe and work with them more, but um, that's where I'm at on that one. Thanks, Ed. Do you know where the town is as far as their transition or, or how that's going? Not totally. Um, what I heard is NIPA, the contractor, is finishing up the Ulster County side of the project, Kingston and perhaps Rosendale, I think. Okay. Uh, they're looking to come over while they're in this, quote, area, come over and work. But even if we were, I mean, there's still a lot of legwork, paperwork to get in front of PSC, and it's, it's no way we'd yeah, have it. We're, we're not ready for that, but I yeah. was just wondering if, you know. Yeah, I think the town... It's my understanding they've gone through the PSC, um, but I don't think the reason Nipo's calling me was to try to load up as much of the contractor's time as they could here. But like you said, we're not. I think conceptually, we'd be there if, if they could prove to us more on the repair side. But it's, uh, last I heard was a, a firm won the bid from south, you know, like down around lower Westchester, Bronx, somewhere, and they would send teams up. I can't okay. see that they would match the repairability, the timeline that Central Hudson can do right now. So, so. anyway, that's the story on that. And our long awaited deputy mayor to do his series of reports. You ready, Brent? Yes, sir, I am. I'll start with the Village Green Committee month report, uh, the related. Budget accounts of the Village Green Committee are as follows. Community beautification, we have $3,372 remaining. Shade tree contractual, we are minus $3,100. That's a result of pruning some additional trees in the general business district. And the Village Green Committee checking account, um, Lara, if you'd be so kind as to amend that number to $4,712.92. And that's in, in accordance with what Ray um, reported on. There were no Village Green Committees held during the month of December, and members of the Village Green Committee are currently preparing a Tree City ESA application, and I think the, the deadline's been extended for a couple months, which is good. So we're working on that, and we certainly want to get our 19th year of Tree City USA in place. And of course, residents and businesses interested in having a tree or trees planted on their adjacent right away, volunteering for planting days or making a donation to support the various Village Green Committee's community beautification projects, may contact David Pearson, the village clerk, or myself. The highway monthly report for the month of December, the village's snow ordinance is, is currently in effect through March 31st. Parking is permitted on village streets from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. and on New York State highways, which would be Broadway and Market Street from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. during the same period. When snow or ice removal operations are underway, any vehicle parked or abandoned on any street may be removed by or under the direction of the Red Oak Village Police Department or any responding law enforcement agency and costs associated with vehicle towing and storage will be charged to the vehicle's owners. Also, the owner and or occupant of every building or lot in the village within adjoining sidewalk shall remove snow and ice within 24 hours of a snowstorm. And at the direction of the village board of trustees, the village highway department may remove snow and ice left uncleared at a cost of $2 per linear foot. This is not a service, but more of a penalty. Um, this will be discussed and collected with the next tax levy. The Village Board of Trustees would like to thank Frank Bosberg and Sons Excavating for organizing local excavating and construction companies to assist the Village Highway Department in removing snow from sidewalks of the General Business District on Friday, December 18th. That was the, um, the day after the big snowstorm. And the Village Board of Trustees thank all independent contractors for their help. And no revenue was generated from the sale of scrap metal during the month of December. And the total revenue generated thus far in this fiscal year is $1,488.40. Since 
inception of the scrap metal recycling program back in 2007, $32,940.52 has been generated. And the proceeds from this program go toward the purchase of tools and equipment for the village highway, water and materials management departments. Anyone interested in donating scrap metal may contact the village highway department or the village clerk's office. And highway department personnel will assist property owners by picking up scrap metal upon request. Um, the Red Hook Infrastructure and Intermunicipal Task Force. This has been a very good year for our sewer project. Actually, a good month for our sewer project. Meetings were held on December 4th and 18th via telephone conference calls. Um, the Village of Red Hook received a memo from USDA Rural Development on December 15th. The memo stated, Rural Development has reviewed the documents submitted for bidding and found these documents to be acceptable. You are now authorized to proceed with, bid, with bidding. Corrective actions, including affidavit of publication of bid advertisements, analysis of qualified low bidder, final as bid project budget forms and engineer certificate or final plans, and specs are required to be submitted by the village on completion of the bid and contract award process. CT Mail Associates has updated all documents to reflect the USDA rural development bid conditions and is certified that all conditions have been addressed and the project can go out to bid. This certification was issued by CT Mail to USDA on December 21st. Also, CT Mail Associates responded on December 9th to comments regarding design and specifications of the wastewater treatment plant by the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation. Additional comments from the EFC were received on December 31st, and responses to these comments by CT Mail are forthcoming. That is excellent news, Brent. Sorry to cut in, but it's, it's very timely as well because I ran for village trustee four years ago on a let's get the sewer in. <laughs> you so just, the, just, just in time, time for couldn't be better. Just in time for re-election, Charlie. <laughs> Fantastic. And the Red Hook Su Common Sewage Works Corporation finalized the transfer of ownership of the existing wastewater treatment plant and 10 acres of land to the village of Red Hook on December 29th. The village of Red Hook now owns and operates the former Red Hook Commons wastewater treatment plant, which means that the village of Red Hook is currently in the sewer business and a um, long time coming. So we're, we're planning on going, going out to bid and I'll just give you the tentative timeline that where the project is, is gonna be following. On January 18th, the Village of Red Hook, with the assistance of CT Mail, will post the invitation to bid in the Village's official newspaper and various trade publications. February 25th, bids will be opened in the Village building of the Village of Red Hook. On March 8th, trustees will approve the qualified low bidder based on review of the bid documents by CT Mail. In April of 2021, Upon further review of the bid documents by Village Legal Counsel, the Board of Trustees will award the contract and sign agreements and notice to proceed. On May to June of 2021, construction of the Village of Red Hook sewer system will begin. An 18 month construction schedule will also begin. And the project is expected to be completed by the summer of 2022. So it may be done earlier, but that's the 18 month schedule is, is slated for um, the summer of 2022. So good news, we'll get started on that and um, we're looking forward to it. So I think the hard part is yet to come. <laughs> Don't say that, oh my God. Hopefully it'll go smoothly. The cell tower on the elevated water storage tank um, the generator project, the Village of Reddick notified Ray Pantel of Pantel Electric of Middletown, New York, that his qualified low bid to provide a generator for cellular communication companies currently leasing space on the village's water tower cannot move forward on December 18th. The village cannot bond for the estimated $83,500 for the project, and alternative options to provide generator services are currently being explored. 
and on the village of Red Hook Water and Sewer Administration Improvement Projects, correspondences between Northeast Water Technology, PRI, and Delaware Engineering continues. Water leaks detected by Northeast Water Technology and review of the village's current well monitoring equipment and billing software are being reviewed. Um, the village of Red Hook crosswalk signal devices, we do have four. Um, RRFBs, which are rectangular rapid flashing beacons. One was knocked down, the one on uh, Benner Road and West Market during the snow plowing operations on December 17th. Um, the New York State DOT did re erect a sign at Benner Road and West Market. The DOT also forwarded our RFB product information to the village. The village of Reddick, according to an approved agreement will be responsible for future maintenance and repairs. So it's good to have the manuals in hand. Uh, and on the Intermissible Task Force, both Charlie and I sit on the task force representing the village of Red Hook. There were no task force meetings held during the month of December. And just some quick, hopefully I'll go quick on this. Um, some of the board meetings, the Town of Red Hook Zoning Review Committee, and the Community Preservation Fund um, Advisory Board. We had no meetings during the month of November or December. The current balance of the Community Preservation Fund as of December 31st, $1,813,659.79. We've been seeing this grow pretty rapidly in the last four or five months, and um, I anticipate it's going to grow again. Uh, the so, and this is the 2% tran transfer tax on the CPF, so anything above the, the county meeting for a single family home, if a property sells, sales price exceeds that amount, 2% of the difference between the county median and the sales price is put into the Community Preservation Fund, which is used to protect farmland, wellheads, um, open space, um, historic properties, um, wetlands. Therefore, there's a, quite a list of things this could be used for. Right. So good. Yes, sir. Is there a is there an easement project in the works right now in the town? Not that I'm aware of. We haven't okay. had meetings with that. Usually, when we get an applicant that comes in, there that there isn't something in the works, but a formal application hasn't been completed. Okay. And presented to the to the CPF advisory board at this point in time. Okay, thanks. Uh, the Salt Hill Watershed Community, um, there were no Salt Hill Watershed Community meetings held during the month of December. Um, however, issue 13th of the Salt Hill Watershed Community newsletter was circulated. And this issue includes uh, member outreach, a year in review, an article by Karen Schneller McDonald, Protecting Our Waters. And the Salt Hill Watershed Community received a $3,000 grant from the Open Society University Network through Bard College. Um, the Town of Red Hook Local Waterfront Revitalization Program Working Group. There were no meetings held of the LWRP Working Group during the month of December. Um, the Working Group is waiting for review and comments by the New York State Department of State for organizing a public informational meeting for the Red Hook community to review current proposed updates to the local waterfront revitalization plan of the town of Red Hook. Uh, the Northern Duchess Alliance, we did have a meeting on December 4th. This is the executive committee um, on December 4th via Zoom, and we reviewed the Northern Duchess municipalities, procedures, protocol, and effectiveness of operations during the current COVID-19 pandemic. We did hear from one of our members, Senator Sue Serino, on New York State's financial relief for businesses and municipalities, vaccination programs and procedures, the status of care for the New York State nursing homes and public school operations. This information can be found on her website as well. Uh, we also discussed updates on zoning amendments currently being legislated and or developed in Northern Duchess municipalities 
a lot of these are involved the um, short-term rentals. And we also dis discussed plans for the Northern Duchess Alliance annual breakfast and award ceremony. It's doubtful that we'll have our annual breakfast, which is usually in February, um, but we're still planning on perhaps awarding um, some awards out as well. Uh, the Village of Red Hook Sony Review Committee, um, Ray Towell and myself both, I think, were the remaining members of the, of the committee. We had no meetings during the month of December. Um, we did make proposed amendments to Chapter 200, which is the zoning code of the Village of Red Hook. And these include changing the highway business district to the gateway district, amendments to Section 200-11 regarding use and bulk regulations of the gateway district, adding one property currently in the R10,000 district to the gateway district, amending Section 209, which is the R10,000 district, regarding special permits for live work units for properties located on East Market Street within the sewer service area, adding eight properties currently in the R10,000 district on South Broadway and Fifth Street, the neighborhood mixed use district and adding a definition of live works units in section 200-5. Delaware Engineering has prepared an amended zoning map to reflect the proposed expansions of the gateway and neighborhood mixed use districts and copies of the proposed amendments have been sent to Four Corners Planning and Roddenhouse and Shaw and Paul Darrow for review, comments, and preparation of drafts of proposed legislation Seeker documents and Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development approval in accordance with New York State Statute 239M. So we're patiently awaiting that draft so we can review it and um, hopefully pass these amendments to our zoning law. And that's it. Okay, thank you. I made a few notes just to follow up on a few things as you went, Brent, rather than interrupt. Um, Lara, if you wanted to make a note in your sidelines there, mm -hmm. um, when Brent talked about the snow ordinance, I did see in our voucher pack this month, um, looks like we did tow one car, but the particular bill was unreadable. I, could see, I, I, know, I know who we hired to tow it, but I couldn't identify from that record what we, who we towed. There would be a police or somewhere there's a better record. We, the concept is we incur the cost and we bill whoever we pulled. So we need to identify who that was and then we could pass it to Ray and get a request for reimbursement out from sure. the vehicle owner. Um, one thing, we're really proud of our four corner cleanup every year and we did get it cleared and that weekend before the big uh, Christmas weekend itself. But although Brent is very diplomatic and likes to thank the vendors, I just want to make it sure and clear that um, even though he thanks them in his reporting, um, they're crucial to the, the effort, but we do pay them. They, they don't come out and volunteer their time or trucks. And you will, if you sign the vouchers this month, you'll see that uh, we do help keep the local economy going, even with that piece of uh, what we do. Um, and that's very diplomatic there. <laughs> yeah. When I read it and hear it, it sounds like, hey, these guys show up and kind of have fun and do it for uh, the benefit. Granted, they do an amazing job, but they, they don't do it for free. Um, other pages, um, on, you know, what was it, uh, Friday, I guess, three or four days ago, um, Brent and I, I did circulate a press release about it today, but in line with Brent's reporting there with us taking ownership of the existing sewer plant and the surrounding acreage for our second plant, we uh, did a photo shoot, we'll call it. We met with the project team, the core you know, legal engineering and myself and Brent and some county officials that helped us. And uh, we circulated a photo, but uh, we were joking, how do you make a transfer of key and ownership of a sewer plant? The word a reporter came up with was scintillating. It's, uh, you know, we're, uh, I think it was 22 degrees and we're wearing masks and uh, nothing too much you could do, I don't think, <laughs> unless you really had a spin master of some sort. But but we're, as we all know, we're all excited and happy that I called it a milestone at our get together. It really is. It's been 4.75 years, I think I like to say, that we've been working on it so far. And uh, standing there, it was 
culmination of a lot of the work. Now, like Brent says, the next part starts. I don't think it could ever be harder than we went through, but it's <laughs> not going to be easy, I don't think. Um, and then I don't know. Uh, let's see. It'll be real. It'll involve more things than just paper. Yeah. Then we also, even though what we do is hard work, we like to have fun doing it. But when Brent reported that, that one RRFB acronym got knocked over, just to clear that too, it wasn't hit by any of our staff. It was uh, not the state either. It looks like the contract vendor to the school was uh, plowing and somehow hit it. The good part was it had not yet been accepted in substantial completion by the state. So they called the contractor back and reset it at not our cost, which is good. And we are working on the second one here by right by Village Hall, crossing Route 9. Um, it's having problems communicating from point A to B. Um, it had this about a month ago. State fixed it. It's still under that same category of not being accepted yet. And then it's having a similar problem the other day. I'm looking out the window to see if I can see it. Um, state advised me they're going to just change out the entire control box. They don't like the fact that it's slipping the ability to talk from the two posts. So uh, if you try to use it, be really careful. It's um, one side lights and the other part, the other side's not hearing the communication link and not a good thing, but they said they'd have that done about 10 days from about a week ago. So um, it may be, it need to be done now. But at some point they did, uh, like Ben said, they did send us <laughs> all little interesting schematics and manuals. So we can theoretically open up the control boxes and get our hobby guys to figure out how to maintain it. But our hope is, our hope was that they're pretty stable and standard and not much work. But in about four weeks, one got knocked down and the other one wasn't talking to each other twice. So, but anyway, were you going to say something, Brent? Yeah, has our highway department received copies of those um, spec sheets then? Uh, I forget who I copied, but I think I copied you. I think our engineers and um, I, I think I'd have to double check. They don't have an active mailbox that accepts that kind of stuff, but um, I probably tasked something here, but I'll, I'll double check. Um, okay. I think we have to have, maybe Lara can make a note. Um, mm -hmm. We should make a three ring binder or something on that for now. Yeah. But those were some more explanations of things Brent reported out. Thank you, Brent. You're welcome. Let's move into our regular business section. I think what I will do, as Brent was talking, I wrote down the word pond. It's not on the agenda, but it kind of segues ending his report. As, um, he and I Friday had a Zoom Ring Central conversation with a resident on Fifth Street who is joined with some other folks and they're doing a lot of research on the Kramer's Vlies, what it's being called now. It's the 1889 uh, and ongoing pond story. Brent had offered his paper file to some of the people involved. I have about a five inch thick file. But it's pretty exciting because a new group of folks are revisiting and re-examining options there. And we explained a little bit what the CPF can and can't do. Unfortunately, it's more of a can't as far as the $1.8 million, as much as we'd like to grab it somehow, it's not there for a grab. But we did set another meeting with the core group for uh, two weeks from Friday, so whatever that is. Uh, but just to clarify, the CPF can be used for preservation, which means basically ownership of the property, but not for restoration. So that money in the community preservation fund cannot be used to restore the pond or the wetland but it could be used for acquisition purposes or to secure um easements mm, but in this case the big expense is the cleanup yeah preservation is not the right word it's it's there's an engineering study that our position from our research years ago is there has to be a way to evacuate and control the water level and that's a huge, huge. It's a big project. Yeah, it's big. But it's good to see a certain interest and new ideas, and they will come up with something we didn't think of before. But thanks to those that are helping on that. And Brent and I will, I know we booked that meeting two weeks from last Friday. It's on my calendar. Um, all right. 
So, appointments is next on the agenda. What I've got is, um, you will recall that maybe six weeks, eight weeks ago, one of our ZBA Zoning Board of Appeal members, uh, Caroline Ryder, sold her house in the COVID quick sale transaction timeline way quicker than she expected and moved out of the village. So that's a prerequisite for being on a village board like ZBA. Um, and she was at the point, same point, the next circle for us is you have to be a county resident. She was no longer even a county resident. Long story short, she had to resign. And then we had Will Noonan who was steadfastly working on the ZBA, but then when trustee Jay Chap moved away, we liked Will's energy and idea level. So we moved him up to the village board. That being done, we ended up with two vacancies on the ZBA Zoning Board of Appeals. We put out a search. I had conversations with the chair of that board to see if he had any recommended folks that he had come across in his travels. And then we, we few of us talked independently. I have come up with two folks and just to remind the board and anybody listening on um, the way it works. This is a midterm appointment. Normally we reorganize in our April, our official meeting of the years in April. Um, we tend not to have a lot of turnover in these positions, but here we have two. So what we'd be doing is appointing two for the terms of the ones that left. And um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll name the names. Um, we've interviewed them. They've concurred in the intervening weeks since we started the search. Um, one candidate I want to put forward is Stephen Appenzeller. I've known him personally for a while. He's an active town resident. He's active on volunteer committees ranging from Red Oak Responds. You will recall we put him on our resiliency committee to help get that organization some shell and legal protection. And then um, he's active with the uh, Red Oak Education Foundation. And um, my experience, he's got a strong analytic mind that would fit with the ZBA, what, what one needs to do there. And uh, he said he has the time and commitment to the village. He was looking to do something to help us. And uh, so I want to put him up and then I'll slide to the other one. Steve, like I said, lives in the village, lives on Linden Avenue. Um, the other is Sherry O. Young. Um, she lives on East Market Street. She's a counselor at Bard College, also looking in some shape or form to help with the village. And um, she came to me through a recommendation of one of the other ZBA members. I've interviewed her and explained that it's an appellate level review body, autonomous from village politics, village elected officials. They understand it. And um, they both agreed to take it on. They understand it's not for pay position. They understand there's a fair amount of reading and classwork. And when I say classwork, we do expect them once you to comply with certain things. And to our credit, our deputy mayor, Brent, used to be chair of the ZBA for 14 years before he moved up to the village board. So he's our uh, zoning, in all positive senses, geek, I would call him. Um, Sar? <laughs> so that's better, yeah. Not that better. Um, he, you know, he, we, I had him consult with them too, if any questions they had, and uh, you know, they, they get it that it's, they don't meet every month, so it's a hard thing to learn, but at the same time, Brent will be recommending too that they take some land use and different courses that are offered out there to Pace University and different options they might have, but they both seemed excited. So what I'm saying is in the way the village law works, these type of appointments are made by the mayor, but they need board consensus. So unless there was some strong objection to either one, um, I don't expect that to be the case. Um, it's, we do have two seats open. It's a five panel board um, due to some technicalities. Even though three is an odd number, you do need in a short board, you would need all three votes the same way. Um, and that could be a problem um, in certain cases. So, and I didn't want to really have four board members because that makes an even situation. So we've got them both to agree. So I would propose that Steve Appenzeller of Linden Avenue, Red Hook, and Sherry O. Young of East Marcus Street be um, 
appointed to the village board, excuse me, the village zoning board of appeals, effective after a vote tonight. Um, and if successful, they'd be invited to come in and sign their oath of office for that position, those two positions. And then also our administrative staff would give them the guidebooks and different material they need. They might not have that tomorrow, but um, they would have to be given that information and uh, move into that world as members of our ZBA. So, tell, them, tell them to tell them to bring a wheelbarrow for the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is complicated, and uh, but it is important. And uh, but like I said, we prepped them and advised them, and they they're up for it. So I move that Appenzeller and Ms. On, Ms. Let's see, it's a uh, Oyang is the pronunciation of her last name. Sherry Oyang, um, be appointed to the ZBA to fill the expiring terms of the two. And then at our April meeting, we would, they would be sitting board members and be reappointed at April to um, essentially one position, one of those two was expiring 2021 anyway. We've had to reappoint one then. And the other one was a 2023 expiration of term. So we'll just do that in our April meeting, but they'll be able to sit until then. And it's not like they're interim appointments. It's just, that's the cycles they'll fit into. Um, I offer it, I would ask for a second. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, any other discussion? I'll just call for a roll call on this so I know. Um, Blondell, I vote yes. Norris? Yes. Uh, Kovalchuk? Yes. Did you say yes? I did. Okay, thank you. Um, Will? Yes. And Mr. Lang? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited about that. It'll be good. Fill up that board and we'll be underway. Election details dash resolution. Lara present, prepared um, a resolution we decided it will be number one for the year 2021. And what this is about, um, well, the elections are in March. Lara can read some specifics in a few minutes, but um, in, in our world and in our law, the village clerk coordinates and handles elections. Um, it's not run through the Dutchess County Board of Elections and so forth. And we run on what's called the independent nominating petition process. So um, if Larry, if you feel comfortable, we could, um, if you want to start resolution for March 16, where you have the bold print there and do you want to read that out loud and then we can talk. Sure. You good, Larry? Can you hear me? Yes. So resolution for March 16th, 2021 village elections. Whereas as per election law, section 15-1041B and section 15-1043B, the board of trustees of the village of Red Hook will hold a village election on Tuesday, March 16th, with the polling location being at the village hall, 7467 South Broadway, Red Hook, between the hours of 12 noon and 9 p.m. Whereas on November 19th, 2021, the village ele election was published by a legal notice in our local newspaper advising of three trustee positions to be filled. Two trustee positions with a four year term, one trustee position with a two year term, which will fill an unexpired term. Whereas as per election law, section 15-1161, the board of trustees of the village of Red Hook is authorized to appoint two election inspectors for the village election and hereby appoints the following persons, Ellen Trebwasser, Jeffrey Levine. Whereas per election law, section 15-116, the board of trustees of the village of Red Hook is authorized to appoint an alternate election inspector and hereby appoints the following, Elaine Gifford. Whereas per election law, section 15, the board of trustees is authorized to give a compensation to election inspectors and agrees to compensate at the rate of $15 an hour to each election inspector for hours worked during election. 
And whereas her election law section 115, the board of trustees of the village of Red Hook here appoints, hereby appoints Lara Hart, village clerk, as the person to read the revolt results of the village election. Therefore, be it resolved that the board of the trustees of the village of Red Hook hereby approves said resolution number 1-2021. Thank you, Lara. Yep. As I mentioned, it's a requisite that we do this. Um, it's essentially naming the election inspectors, the alternate, the hourly rate, and, and restating, just for the record, it's March 16th, 26th of the actual election. Uh, we created a, a mail ballot box. Today we saw information that um, the governor has not changed the election date with COVID, but that reduced by 70%, excuse me, to 70% of the original legal number of petitions signed signatures that you need as a candidate. So um, that's out in the public domain, um, and that's up to the candidates to take care of their election details. We don't babysit or coordinate. It's just um, we are the reviewer of completed petitions. Um, anyway, that came out today. I would move that we adopt resolution one. Is there a second? I have a question, Ed. Yeah, if we could take a second first and then. Um, okay. Second and then. Brent, okay. And any discussion? I think Mr. Noonan had a question. Yeah, on the, on the second whereas paragraph, mm -hmm. November 19th, 2021. Yeah, good point. Um, oh, yes, I'll correct that. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm in that 2021 mode. <laughs> good for you. We're usually. <laughs> yeah, I have any, a little reminder on my desk 2021, 2021. <laughs> Anything to get at 2020. You over-reminded <laughs> yourself. That's, thank you, Will. So, so, Ed, how many, uh, how many signatures do, do I need? What's the magic number? 50. Well, if you look at the code, you look at the population of the village, there's a whole outline of size of municipality, drives, number of petitions, and then what we saw from the governor today, 70% of that number. So uh, okay. you, that'd be up to you. You get a look at the code and that'd be the and answer. Do the calculations. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. when are petitions due? I don't know that we need to answer that on the phone for anybody. Okay. But, um, but if you wanted to check, I think websites, the village law, it's, Lara could answer that separately, but sure. she's not any one person's campaign manager or um, campaign advisor. So um, I would say. Okay somewhere a little bit later it's usually about i know when we ran two years ago it's usually around late february but i don't remember the exact date it's all times off so many days before the election and it rotates backwards from the election date itself um, but anyway but they're still underway so we had a motion for a second any other discussion I'll therefore call the roll so the clerk can have the record. Uh, Mayor Bondella will yes, adopt. Mr. Kowalczyk? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. And Trustee Noonan? Yes. Okay, good. So, Lara, whatever you have to do tomorrow in the resolution book, you're good? Yes. Thank you. And, um, in, in line with the question, um, we get documents from the Conference of Mayors, which we're a member of as a municipality. Uh, probably as a general enough accessible website for some of the questions that were just asked. I don't know if you have, how far you have to drill in to get other questions, but as I recall, Village Law is posted in state databases and you drill down and can find dates and work your way backwards. Um, The next thing I have, let's see. Was um, Dutchess County Water Wastewater Authority Tradition Project Consecutive System, system Agreement. <laughs> last, last month in December, 
I thought it had circulated to each board members a, a digital attachment copy of a document we're working on. Unfortunately, the reason I was puzzled last month was that um, I'd sent it to Lara, um, but didn't hit CC for all the board members. So that's why I had a puzzled look for a bit there. But um, since then, it did get circulated. And then um, I know Brent got his copy too. I've had a little more conversation with the Ward Authority. We were trying to get it done by January 1 was one of the issues, but they said it's not life or death for them. Um, what I want to just do is take the same tack I had the last meeting. We've had council look at it. We have a water provision contract with the water authority to sell water to that project when it's built out. We've done all the computations, we've done the rate, all that is the same, nothing changes. It's just they're not near to or built out enough yet that the water authority doesn't want to start sending up administrative folks. They would, the county department of we call it the Department of Health, but it's really Behavior and Community Health is the proper name. They appear at DBCH in the document. Um, essentially, what they'll do is they'll accept our report items. You know how Charlie reports about bacteriological findings and tests. Um, we'll still be able to send the test we send down to the county and it will incorporate tradition rather than breaking off tradition right now is being fully administered by the county. The agreement is only for the calendar year 2021. <coughs> and um, like I said, we circulated it. And what I'd like to do is, <coughs> me, I need a drink of water in a minute. Um, I'd like to try to get it signed this week um, just to get it off to them. The authority has been helpful and cooperative with us. And this way we can just pull them into our sampling for the next 11 and a half months now. And um, we would like to move forward. I would like to move forward. Um, my ask would be that um, since council's reviewed it and you all had a chance to look at it rather than polling you, my original intention was to poll you, but that seemed a little difficult to do. Um, I would ask that, and I'll phrase it and I'll make a more formal motion um, in reference to the agreement between the village of Red Hook that we move ahead and sign this, this consecutive agreement so we can take their samples. I guess that's not even the right word. Take samples that will be incorporated and concluded, or the conclusion will be that they also meet the need for sampling within the district for the next year until uh, more is built out. And then we'll pass them back to the Ward Authority and they have to do their own thing. Does anybody have any thoughts, questions before I get more formal? Does anybody have an objection or question? Um, all right. Well, Larry, if you're ready to write, I would just mm -hmm. be a motion that the mayor be authorized to sign the agreement between the village of Red Oak and the Dutchess County Water and Waste Water Authority for the operation of the consecutive water system as detailed in the document number 22519. And we'll have a period documents been reviewed by village council and um, the mayor is hereby authorized to sign saying, is there a second? Second. Um, any other discussion? I would ask for a roll call again. Blundell would vote yes. Uh, Kowalczyk? Yes. Uh, Norris? Yes. Uh, Will? Noonan? Yes. Um, and Mr. Lang? Yes. Okay, thank you. Got that under our belt. All right, this will be a little more water related things. I did get. Um, a letter from Dutchess County Department of Behavioral and Community Health. They do an annual walkthrough of our systems, ranging from tanks to treatment plan to well fields. And they give us a cross between housekeeping report and things we need to work on. Um, we're up to the biggest one they still talk about folks is when we did phase one and two of the water project, 
our intention was to decommission the elevated water tank and just leave it as a standalone essentially a structure for cell tower tenants and uh, not hold water anymore. We've tried, you all probably remember over the past three years at least, various experiments to drop the support that gives us to our water line pressure. We've had a variety of issues arrive that our engineers and our operators um, have advised us not to take the elevated tank offline yet. We inserted some bladder units in our main pumping station, different things. And again, our consultants tell us they're not prepared yet to take that thing offline. Um, in two weeks, well, not even that, in this Friday, I should say, Brent and I are going to be meeting with our engineers and looking at a lot of big picture water things, and this will be part of it. Um, looking at the overall operations and needs in the department. And the secondary reason for the meeting is since we technically already are in the wastewater treatment business as well, we're just trying to firm up something we've been looking for, you know, some sort of oversight, some sort of management scheme that schedules and defines tasks and oversights that we need to comply with. So we'll be bringing this report with us. Um, so another thing that they brought up was um they talked about abandonment that we haven't abandoned the tower yet and then um they don't like that the bladder tank that our engineers put in the treatment plant in the sense that it's um not that it's doing anything wrong or dangerous to our system it's tied in with the inability to drop down the or take the elevated tank offline and then um, they talk about, you might remember when we, in the summer, we tried to do um, well level readings at our wells to see where we stood with the drought. And we learned there were certain transducer issues communicating to our uh, automated systems. They picked up on that as well. And we've been leaning on our operators to look at the best way to do that. Right now, we're hearing that they might be re recommending fiber optic communications between our well house and our wells. So Brent and I will work on that as well summer is mundane as well 15 needs a number placard that's like something on a building by a well um, and well three pressure gauge needs replacement so this was stamped into us january 4th we'll get a copy to our operators and engineers in preparation for that meeting too so we do have that um, the other big topic we're working on today is 11 January. Our next workshop is scheduled for January 21 with regard to the police redesign project. Um, what I'd like to do is, of course, keep that project, <clears throat> but have a little discussion here and take the board's suggestion on some timing. Um, we know we're working with an April 1 deadline to have our plan written and filed. We made good progress at our first meeting. The stakeholders and folks have the 100 page document. We went through things. We'll do the 21 meeting, but at some point we are obligated to whatever we write as our goals and our, our, our picks for what we're gonna work on. We then have to have that public hearing. I'm thinking if Jennifer's our calendar woman expert there, but- um, <laughs> Got it going. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we can work backwards here together or in the workshop, but I'd like to try it out. If we have a workshop, those, you know, are usually Thursdays and they tend to be our more informal brainstorming type scenarios, whereas our monthly meetings are more formal and our monthly meetings are carried by Panda. Um, I'm inclined to make our public hearing on the police redesign March 8th, which would be, I think, our normal March meeting date. Um, it's going to be a little complicated because the next month, April, is our normal reorg meeting, which is a very long and I would say detailed, mundane meeting. We're just transacting business that we have to do. So the March 8th looks like a candidate. I'm a little disinclined to have a separate special meeting only because they're sometimes outside the parameters of what people think our meeting's being on. And we could certainly make public notice and make it happen, but. I'm inclined to say March 8th for the public hearing, which would give us the workshop 
in a week, 10 days. And um, I'd really like to try to bring it to the culmination as we can, as soon as possible, so we can write up our document and uh, get something ready for March 8th. I think if the board and others of us think about that, we can um, talk about it at our um, 21, 21 January uh, next workshop. And, um, as Are these meetings, board, sorry, this is yeah. also around the time that we would start looking at the budget. Are we going to have separate meetings for the police reform matter and budget or are we going to do them at the same meeting question. right now the way i've defined the workshop meetings in january is police reform and budget because there is that parameter what we select has to also be balanced with regard to what's unfunded mandate what can we afford mm -hmm. so I think these months yes i think february we're probably going to slip as a board to just budget because the other deadline is i say March 15th or March, somewhere mid to late March is the deadline for the tentative budget being done. I've started work on it, but it's still a composite project of the board. It's been our operating style for the past eight, 10 years. You know, we meet and brainstorm. We're still waiting back the department head managers reports on what they need, their wishes, dreams, and unfortunately what we probably have to tell them we can't do, but, um, like I said, other meetings just let it sink in. It's a 1.31% tax cap this year. And what Brent was hinting at was, you know, if there's some more room in the tax base that helps, uh, but still we're playing with right now about 16,000 new dollars. And if the tax base went up a little bit, it might be 17, 18,000, but it's not tons of new money. Um, but, but you're right, Jen, we we'll probably have to flip to those in the February month which is normally one of our busier times in normal times. Um, um, I guess we'll have to figure out a way. You know, I have that Excel spreadsheet, the model we use, and I suppose what I can do with that is push it to share screen level and just instead of looking at our faces, we'll just look at the screen and talk. But, but thanks for that, Jen. Where I was headed though is I'm half inclined the board saw some communications today. We are now in COVID-19 phase 1B, um, which enables our residents over age 75 to schedule their vaccination. But it's also enabling first responders, police type employees to get COVID vaccinations. We're seeing it locally and across the population. For some reason, there's a resistance to taking the vaccine. In my mind, it poses a really big problem in that it's our obligation to protect our employees. Where does it leave us as an employer if the employees don't want the protection? And the bigger question is those employees that interact with our public, not only are they putting themselves at risk, but they could be then interacting with others that we're sending them out to help. Um, it's, it's a big convoluted, and not just Red Oak issue. What I'm thinking, I think it's to the level of, I think we need to have a special meeting on an executive level status this Thursday um, to give us some time to get some legal union human reaction to this. Um, I know myself, I would grab that vaccine right now if somebody came in and gave it to me. You know, if, uh, uh, and, and I get some people might have some objections, but uh, and you know, we're an employer like any corporate entity. We just we happen to be a municipal government. Uh, what do we expect of our own people, and what what can we expect in the legal world? I don't know the answer to every piece of it now, um, but I think between now and Thursday, each of us could task ourselves with reaching out to some contacts and sources. You know, of course. I'll have a little more access to council and unions and um, so forth. But I, I see it as somehow we have to convince that we are leadership. And if you can get the vaccine, unless you've got some intense biological reason, it's, um, it's something that we have to keep our people safe, keep our residents safe and uh, move the vaccine. We have to get up to that 
magic number of people vaccinated so life can become some version of normal. Um, so if any of you from your personal expertise, your personal workplaces, um, your professional knowledge, has anything we could talk about it now. It just came upon us today. Um, today was the first day 1B went live, January 11. And um, it's pretty, pretty big, I think. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts, but where I'm headed, calendar, Jennifer there, uh, today's the 11th, so 12, 13, must be the 14th, 14th. must be Thursday. Um, I don't envision a big meeting. It would have to be special notice. It would have to be, in my opinion, I think it's executive session because it's a personnel issue. Um, it's a union contract. It's not, um, in this meeting, I just want to go public saying, hey, we're offering it. And um, my expectation is that people take it and we're going to have to seriously look at what our options are. Um, we can't have our employees refusing a tool that's going to help everybody. So that being said. So just Ed, um, I have a planning board meeting that night. So would Greg be able to yeah, we got that Greg cover it? Yeah. It'll be executive session. Um, as a rule, we, uh, those are very protected discussions. If we come out and vote on something, we need a clerk secretary there to uh, transcribe the vote. Um, but good point, Lara. We do ours remotely. I have to set up a separate Zoom meeting. Somehow I have to figure out that part because I usually open up yours to get you going, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we could do board is set ours for 7.15 p.m. What Lara is saying is um, she opens up a ring central meeting at 7 with my help. And they, I click it over to record and they move on without me. But uh, um, it's just the nature of me being the administrator setting up the meetings. So I'm thinking 14 January, 7.15 p.m., a special meeting, the clerk will have to get a notice out. We'll get it out um, to talk about Section 1B implications and employment and uh, staff reactions. Uh, I guess I could make it as a motion. Um, we're trying to pick a night when hopefully most of you all can make it, but it is short notice, I know, but I think it's important. So I would move that the village board make a special meeting with all the requ requisite notice requirements complied with to meet an executive session only on employee and contract issues for January 14, 7, 15 p.m. via Ring Central. Is there a second? Second. Who said that, Jen? I did. Okay, Jennifer. Um, any other discussion? All in favor, Blundell, yes. Kowalczyk? Yes. Um, I think that was a muted yes. Was that a yes? Yes, it was. Um, Noonan? Right. Noonan? Yes. Uh, Lang? Yes. And let's see. One other. Oh, come on. Got me. I got Kowalczyk. I got Noonan. <laughs> Nars. Yes. Nars yes. made it with the second. That's why she's not in the column. <laughs> and she would have Okay. Thank you, people. Um, oh, feedback. What'd you do? Sounds like my old stereo from 1971. <laughs> uh, -oh. uh, I think we've moved through department reports, regular business, things I had on the agenda. I hopefully <clears throat> everything we want to talk about. Um, I would open up to, is there any particular items from the board at first, anything we needed to talk about that I didn't talk about yet for tonight? Nope. I know we have a fair amount of folks out there. Um, like we said at the workshop, if you don't mind folks, if you want to unmute and just make an introduction and we'll try to screen out of two, try to talk at once and we'll, we're through. Anybody from the listening public audience have a question or a thought or idea? I have a question. 
Sure. So the um, police reform meeting that was set on the 21st is now not going to be just a police reform. It's going to be in the village budget. No, you're breaking up a little bit with weird interference, but what I was saying, even the first one we had, since there's such a involvement of budget and police reform, technically they're both in our mind as we're working um, because we are, um, as it came up at the workshop, it's one of our bigger departments and what we do, how much we can do. You know, it's a test to us is the reason I have them linked. But it's the same as the last one, the night of the seventh. Okay, so there will still be enough time to actually get something done. So what I'm trying to do is also put a little pressure on all of us to refine and not um, take a lot of months to get where we got to be. We don't have a lot of time to begin with. I think the report we have encapsulates the issues. And I saw something from you today. I didn't get a chance to read through it yet, but it's, uh, you know, I wanted to still down, pick where we're going, name it, get it to public hearing, and then um, that'd be my goal. But it's the same as the last one. It's, it's, it's not gonna have a separate timeline, time segment for budget. It's, All right, um, I show 826, so just about an hour and a half. Um, we have, the board has come in independently and I see sign the vouchers. Um, I know in that pack we did have, just for the public's record, when Ray mentioned the 214,000, whatever, a big chunk of it was, um, we pay around this time of year our police fire retirement employment, pension employment numbers. Um, and then we also pay our general staff employees pension support numbers it totaled about $120,000 plus or minus. So that was in there. Um, and then um, that was one of the bigger numbers, but it's something for public employees. Uh, we, we match by law in some cases up to about 26% of the dollar that they earn, depending on the tier they're in. Um, so it's an expense as we operate, especially in police fire and that world, it's a, uh, it tends to be a higher percentage because they can retire younger and get off into the next career or next world. Um, but what I said is the board looked like we got a majority in to sign the voucher. So I would move that we pay, uh, expenses upon audit. Uh, I'm saying that the audit is done. So, uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Everybody good? Aye. So, Mr. Treasurer, I don't know if you're still on there, but you can again help the economy by mailing out the checks tomorrow. $214,000 worth. Um, and, and Looking things over, we will ask Mr. Kowalczyk, the deputy mayor, to ascertain that the votes have been counted and uh, we're ready to, to close the meeting. I can make a motion that we adjourn this evening's meeting, special, paying special attention to the fact that the sewer project is moving forward. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I would uh, second the deputy mayor's motion and uh, we'll adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Aye. Good night. Good night. Nice. Good night. Nice work, Brent. <laughs>